This video will introduce networking and in particular we'll be looking at local area networks, also known as LANs. Now what is a network? Well a network is two or more computers connected together to share information and resources. And they could be connected with wires or they could be connected wirelessly or it could be a mixture of both. Now where may you have found um, some LANs or worked with LANs before? Well, certainly your school network uh, will be a local area network in an office, in an um, organization somewhere. Uh, they would use a local area network and at home as well. You've probably got a local area network whereby you've got your router that you can connect to either from your PC or laptop um, and maybe your phone or tablet. So what is a local area network? Well, two really important things you need to um, consider when trying to describe or define a local area network. A local area network is a network over a small geographical area and also where the infrastructure, so all the devices are owned by the organization. So again, small geographical area and the devices are owned they're the property of the organization. So why do we bother um, networking computers? Well, um, it's really all about communication. So we can allow people to communicate with each other. We can get them to share digital information. Uh, we can share peripheral devices like printers and scanners. If you think about a, a networked room, you only need to have one printer and they can all, all the computers can um, print out a document. It doesn't matter where you're sat in that room. Whereas if they weren't networked, you would have to probably log off and, and log on to a, a computer that has a printer attached to it in order to print out your documents. So that's not very um, efficient, not very effective. So it allows you to share peripheral devices. You can also update computers from a central point. So you could run updates of the operating system or um, update software or install software from a central um, point. Um, it allows for distributed processing, so you can run a single program on lots of different computers. There are also some disadvantages to having a local area network. One is that you will need to have an expert to set up the network and maintain it, and that can cost a lot of money. It can cost someone's wage, um, which might be, I don't know, £40,000 a year. Uh, there's also security issues as well. If you think about a network having a server, if someone could gain access to the server, they will have um, control over uh, the network and that can be a, a big issue. So um, obviously measures to secure a network. We want to make sure that people change their passwords regularly, have a, a range of characters um, and numbers. Uh, not allowing users to install software because if they did, then they could um, inadvertently install um, a virus onto the network, which wouldn't be very good. And with wireless access, we want to use encryption so that if data was being transferred from one place to the other, that anyone that could uh, intercept that data wouldn't be able to read it. And, well, we've already said changing passwords frequently. So what's needed to make a local area network? Well, there's just a few devices that are required. Um, one of them would be um, at least two computers. Obviously, you can't have a network with... Um, with one. You'd need to have a network interface card which could be a wireless or a wired card. You may need some sort of wireless access point. Uh, you might need a router, uh, not a router sorry, a hub or a switch. Um, and you will need some sort of data transfer media. And you may also need a router if you wanted to connect your network to another network. So at least two computers with a network interface card. And the whole point of a network interface card is really just to convert the data signals from your computer into a signal that can be sent across the network. Data transfer media. Well, you can't transfer data from one place to the other without some sort of medium. Uh, so you might have uh, radio waves, so it could, data could be sent wirelessly, or you may have um, an ethernet cable, so you can send data along the wires or it might be a fiber optic cable. A hub or a switch is often required um, to create a, net, a local area network and these sit in the center of the network and um, allow data to go from one computer to the, to the other. Now a hub, yes it connects nodes together, but the difference 
with uh, between a hub and a switch is a hub isn't considered an intelligent device. Any data packets that maybe computer A want to send to, let's say, computer B, will be sent across the whole network. Um, B is the only one that's probably expecting it, therefore they'll read the data. But the problem is that there will be a lot more data network, uh, so traffic along the network um, if data is being sent everywhere. But they are cheaper. A switch, though, is an intelligent device, and that will switch data from computer A to, for example, computer B. Uh, so it would direct it the right way, therefore reducing network traffic. Now you might need a router, like I said before, if you want to connect your local area network to the internet, then a router would be required. Or if you wanted to connect your local area network to another network, again, a router will allow that to happen. A local area network might also have a wireless access point. So if you wanted to have several mobile devices connect to the network, then a wireless access point would be um, a sensible uh, device to install on your network. Um, there's lots of advantages. You wouldn't need to have any building work, channeling wires through walls, for example. Uh, that wouldn't be required. Uh, you could easily add a new computer, a new node to the network. Uh, you could allow the general public to access your network if you uh, wanted to. Uh, in terms of the drawbacks, though, you can have performance issues with wireless technology. So you can have inter interference if there's certain de um, devices in the in the way. For example, in on a home network, if you've got a fridge between your laptop and the um, wireless access point, it may reduce the um, the connection. Uh, and security issues as well. Um, you know, you need to make sure that you've got good encryption on your wireless network. Otherwise, any intercepted data could be um, read. Now, in terms of creating your um, local area networks, there's two different ways in which that can be done. Uh, you could have a peer-to-peer -peer network or you could have a client-server network. Now, with a peer-to-peer -peer network, all the computers on the network have the same status. Uh, there isn't one computer that is overseeing the others. Often you'll have quite a, a, a slow network as a result. There might be data collisions, shared processing power, ultimately because you haven't got one computer managing the network traffic. Uh, it's really only suitable for small networks with low traffic, um, and it's very popular for a home, um, a home network. Now, the larger the network, the, um, it'd be more sensible really to have a client server network. So this is where at least one of the computers is designated um, as a server. It's usually quite a, a powerful machine um, and it will offer services to the clients. That's ultimately what it does. It serves the client computers. So it might offer them services such as software, uh, a place to store data, um, and it might also manage the traffic on the network to make sure that it is running as efficiently um, as it possibly can. It might also monitor what people do and, and have uh, record what, what they do in the terms of um, data logging. Uh, it might give the network some security. Um, and as I'm sure you're aware from um, connecting to computers on your home network, on your school network, you will have to sign in so you'll be identified. So um, you can have different access rights assigned to different people on the network. Uh, again to improve the security and the experience for users. Large networks may also have um, lots of servers to handle an increase in network demand. So it might not just be one um, particular server that um, is serving the network, it may be a selection. Now there's different ways that you can set up your local area networks in terms of um, the arrangement of the different network devices. You could have a bus network, a ring network, a mesh network, and a star network. And uh, the way in which you set up a local area network um, is given the, the term topology. So we'll have a look at these four different topologies. And when looking at the different topologies, we want to be considering their cost, their performance, and their ease of setup. So with a bus topology, you have just one cable which all the nodes are connected to. So it's very cheap, you just need the one cable. But the issues are that you've got data traveling both ways along the cable. So data collisions will occur, therefore slowing down the network. And also if the cable breaks, then the whole of the network is going to suffer. And it's only really useful over small areas. A ring topology 
is where you have again one sort of major cable but this time data travels in just one direction so that means that you've got no data collisions but again if the cable breaks that is going to make the network go down. With a mesh topology it's known as a fully connected network every single node is connected to all other nodes. Um, if a cable breaks uh, or if you've got heavy traffic in one of the areas of the network then there's other routes that data can take but a big issue with it is the expense. It's very expensive because you've got lots and lots of cabling required. And then finally we've got the star topology. So this makes use of a hub or a switch that sits in the center of the network. All the computers connect to the hub or the switch. If one of those cables breaks then the network can still function. There's fewer data collisions, certainly with a switch if the data is traveled um, or sent from one computer to the intended computer only instead of across the network. But it is the most expensive topology, it's got the most cabling and it also requires, as you said already, a hub or a switch um, in the center.